right, let's talk about emergency communication. Of course, you've heard uh, on these airwaves uh, in the in the past 48 hours, our airwaves being taken over by the emergency alert system because of the severe weather that uh, came through the area. Uh, and that's an important service that at least we can provide. But we're a commercial radio station. But what about the men and women out there on the streets who are coordinating uh, disaster response, who are taking emergency phone calls? Uh, in you know Springfield, of course, they've got the police department uh, and the fire departments, but there's all these other uh, jurisdictions all throughout Sangamon County, small municipalities, small villages, small townships. How are they handling emergency communications? Uh, and you got to think about the uh, the drastic importance of emergency communications at times when. Uh, cell towers might go down or when power might be out. Uh, but to talk more about the status of emergency communications with uh, the prospect of updated technology and emergency radios and the costs of all of that, uh, we're talking now in studio with Chris Mueller. He is the executive director of Sangamon County 911. Chris, great to see you again. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. Thank you. Good to hear. All right. So let's get into this, uh, where we're at, where we're going, and uh, the significance and the importance of what's going on with emergency communication. So what has the county approved? Well, they've approved a contract with Motorola to uh, complete go Starcom for a public safety radio system. So we're, we're basically going to remove the old analog system, which has been, it's old, it's antiquated, um, it's, it's pretty much at the end of its service life. We have to get parts from eBay at times. It's not a good state of, uh, state of the state for emergency radio communications as far as rural fire goes. So tell me like the difference between, because you know, I have an uh, uh, amateur radio license. I've got one of those small bow fangs that I can listen to certain channels, and I might be able to pick this, that, or th- whatever up. Uh, but you guys need much more sophisticated radio equipment. Tell me a bit about the, the technology that they're upgrading to from the analog to the digital. Well, uh, communications have to work. I mean, that's in, in any kind of emergency, you need, you need comms. So uh, basically the old, the old system, um, tried and true you know, for many years, but, but now um, besides just voice, information goes over the airwaves when a, a person pushes the button. So we have identifiers. We know who's keying up. We know who's yelling for help. We, um, um, the keys up on a computer screen. So it's we're long past the days of the walkie-talkie or the CB radio and, and not knowing who's at the other end. So when Sangamon County um, made this move towards uh, analog to digital, uh, give me a bit about the, the, the timeline of when all this is being implemented. Is this something that's in a way being mandated by uh, a federal edict or is this, you know, I guess kind of give me a little bit of background on that too. All right, well, the law enforcement in the county have all gone to digital many, many years ago. I enjoyed that with my former profession at the SPD. Anyway, um, so um, now rural fire was kind of left behind. Uh, rural, the Springfield Fire Department is digital as well. Rural fire was left behind. They got the old sheriff system, which was the analog system. Um, it's pretty much on its last legs. We're trying to bolster it to, to the, the new technologies. As far as the federal mandates go, it's not mandated, but it is preferred. Uh, there can be grant eligibility issues if you're not uh, P25 compliant. So we're, we're just trying to get into the modern age with uh, for everybody across the board. Well, I know there's been um, some issues elsewhere throughout the country where certain emergency communication systems may have like uh, not been there in an emergency, even some of the updated stuff. Um, so uh, talk a bit about uh, the, the cost and the implementation of this, the training that might be behind it. Let's start with uh, the timeline of when we're going to expect to see all this uh, fall into place. Well, right now we're, we're actively searching for tower sites. I think we have a few kind of locked in, no official agreements yet, but uh, handshake agreements. So that's the first thing. Uh, we're in the tower uh, hunting phase, where to, where to plant them, plant a BB and grow a tower. So uh, we're, I think we're going to get ready to finalize some of those. Uh, once that starts, shovel can hurt the, hit the ground. And once that once shovel hits the ground, then we're 18 months away, I think, from a new live system. And the costs, uh, where does the, the cost come from? Uh, and, and this is not just for Sangamon County dispatch, not just for Springfield police, but I mean, we're talking, this is something that all of these different jurisdictions throughout the county uh, are going to have to implement. Is that right? Uh, yeah, everybody in the county will. This, uh, the city, of course, law enforcement is already on SARCOM. The uh, uh, Springfield Fire Department already has their own uh, digital system, so they're not going on it uh, quite yet, if, if ever, but they have their own system right now. But they can get on the system uh, with, with very little effort. Anyway, um, 
I guess I forget your, your, well, your the, question. Well, the the, the, the the costs, you know, all the different municipalities, villages correct. that are going to have to implement this, um, kind of uh, address uh, what's really, I think, some of the concerns out there of who's going to be bearing this cost. Gotcha. The the over the over the fifteen years of this, it's going to be about a fourteen million dollar project. Um, the first uh, seven is basically infrastructure. That's planning the towers and getting all that stuff up to support the radio system. Uh, then there's another $3 million that's just for equipment. That's where I think a lot of the pain is coming from, from the smaller communities. Uh, the county is not only paying for the infrastructure, the initial $7 million, we're also paying another, I don't know, $2 million or so. Um, we're paying about $0.75 cents towards the equipment for each of the agencies out there. So it's it's basically a $0.25 cents on the dollar to them, which is still a pain. I mean, we're not shirking that. Um, but we're trying to subsidize and help them out as much as possible. Talking with uh, Chris Mueller, he is the executive director of Sangamon County 911 about uh, new emergency radios that they're planning, uh, $14 million over 15 years, a lot of new infrastructure, but also new radio equipment that's uh, changing from analog to digital. Uh, and uh, you've got uh, not just uh, Springfield already implementing this, but you've got you know, smaller municipalities uh, across the uh, across the county uh, that are going to also have to uh, switch over to this. Um, and, and you talked about the, the, the subsidies that the county is ultimately going to give to some of these districts. Um, in particular, uh, Loami says that uh, the costs are probably going to eat up most of their budget uh, when it comes to emer- emergency communications. Plus, they're going to have to do uh, annual or even monthly fees uh, per radio, which they, uh, they say that, that, that could stack up. Um, so where are we at uh, and as far as like the subscription costs that there's going to be moving forward and just the, the maintenance costs uh, moving forward through this uh, 15-year project? Well, the, uh, the, the monies initially are coming from the ETSD fund. That's the, uh, the uh, cell phone surcharge that you pay. So that's where all the monies are coming from the, from the county. Um, the equipment-wise, what we're doing, what we're trying to do with, with each individual agency is to give them a five-year Kind of a loan, interest-free loan payment plan um, to to absorb some of this this hit. Um, that wouldn't even start until the eighteen months is up. So that's we're looking at six point five years from now before um, that note would be due in, in full. And then the fees would start after that. We'll pay the first five years of fees. The county will, and then after this note, if you will, if, if for those agencies that need to take the five years, then the fees will start for them. And it's about eighteen dollars a month for per radio right now. Do you know how this is being implemented across the state? Uh, you, you probably have a lot more uh, connections with emergency communication, uh, you know, operations all across the state than I do. But uh, uh, where where's the rest of the state at in this in this process? This is a statewide system. Starcom is a statewide system. So that's the beauty of the interoperability. So for agencies to travel and be able to talk to neighboring agencies and go and help out, uh, that's what this is all about. This is all born out of 9-11, interoperability. You throw a bunch of police, fire, whatever emergency agencies together, and they can't talk, it's a, it's a bad day. So uh, out of 9-11 was born uh, interoperability, a, real, a really big push for that. And that's what this system um, ultimately provides very well. And then, uh, again, we're talking with uh, Chris Mueller, Executive Director of Sangamon County 911. I kind of opened up talking about the importance of emergency communications, but I guess just kind of back that up. Why is this, why should the listeners, why should the taxpayers, the people who are uh, paying for this through their their uh, fees on, on cell phone service and whatnot, uh, why should they care about this? You want your responders to be there. When you call 911, you want somebody, you expect somebody to answer. You uh, want somebody to arrive, you expect somebody to arrive. Well, we have to protect the responders that do arrive. They need information. We have to provide that information to them to keep them safe, to keep you safe, to get to the best service and level of care in an emergency situation that, that's possible. And uh, for for counties or for uh, municipalities within the county, um, townships or um, villages or, or whatever the, the governing body might be that uh, operates emergency communications, what if they can't pay for this? What what happens then if they if they can't foot the bill for updated radios? That's a million dollar question, um, and hopefully one we won't have to broach. Uh, if we do, I, I'm sure something will be worked out somehow. But um, you know, we're we're trying. It, it, it's not lost on on the county at all about the uh, the cost borne as percentage wise small is still a big number. Uh, dollar-wise to them, and we understand that, and we're trying our best to uh, make it as painless as possible with with floating floating loans, taking care of fees for a few years, and whatnot. 
Again, we're talking with Chris Mueller. Uh, he is the executive director of Sangamon County 911. Uh, and springing this question on you out of nowhere, 988 started recently. Uh, what's uh, your role in that as uh, somebody who already is overseeing the 911 operations? Do you have any role in the 988 stuff? I wouldn't say we have an active role. We have uh, been in talks with 988 in the system to try to coordinate what, what happens and where we go forward. There's nothing, uh, there's no groundwork laid out right now. Um, right now, if somebody calls 911, they'll get help. If they call 988, they'll get help. So the bottom line is is getting help. So there's no degradation of service. It's just kind of how how we do do things Um so we're, we're, it's still on the works. This was thrust upon us, uh, thrust upon them um, in short order, the 98 system. So, but we are in communication. We're in talks. We're trying to figure this thing out on the fly. How much of your calls would you say, and I understand if it's just a ballpark type of number, but how much would you say uh, of the calls you guys get in are mental health calls, are calls about people who are in anguish or they're suffering some kind of episode, uh, could possibly be suicidal? Is that is that pretty common? There's another million dollar question because we don't know. Um, there's the obvious ones, the the tin foil, the black helicopters. Then there's the not obvious ones. You really get people calling about black helicopters? Uh, well, there's people that call and and <laughs> or you know, they see something in the sky and and uh, they're there, like, oh, I don't know what this is. There's different levels of, of mental sure. health issues, so it could come as a disturbance. We don't know that as disturbance. It could be a, a we had, used to have a gentleman downtown who boxed, shadow boxed all over downtown. And people would call in because he looks like he's going to punch somebody. But um, it comes in as an angry man or a disturbance or a fight or whatever. We don't know how many of those are are mental health issues until the responders get on scene and they see what uh, what the real true issue is. But based on a phone call, we only get the initial observation reported to us. So that's it's probably much higher than what you would think. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Yeah, I didn't think about uh, that that level of minutiae there. Right. You guys just get an emergency call and you got to answer that call and. Get somebody to address it. Uh, you're not necessarily thinking at that instant, oh, this is a mental health call. we got to move it somewhere Correct. else. Uh, Chris Mueller, he is the executive director of Sangamon County 911. Greatly appreciate your conversation this early in the morning uh, and being amenable as we uh, have to make way in the 7 o'clock hour uh, for the council roundup. So greatly appreciate it, and we'll talk again soon, all right? My pleasure. Thank you. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WM.